I have a buyer who is under contract for a house that was appraised for $1 million in 2022. I'm going to tell you what that house is listed at currently, and I think it's going to explain what is happening in the Nashville market. Now, this is going to be a Nashville housing update, and I think when you see the statistics, but then provided with an anecdote of what's happening, it may make a lot more sense about what is a very, very wild housing market. Now, let's just start by looking at what Greater Nashville Realtors posted because we have more record prices. Now, to give you an idea of the price, you know, you can see here the Nashville median price as of today is 520. This is Saturday, August 9th, 520,000, but it was 525 when they reported July figures. This is a uh, this is the same pool that Nash, that Greater Nashville Realtors uses, but it's daily. So you can actually see what it is daily. And you can see here I have uh, uh, 525, and let's see what they reported here for single family, 524, 700. 524, 700 for the single family, 344 for the condo. Now I will tell you, condo prices, the median price is dropping. Something to pay attention to, condo prices are dropping. And I'll tell you, I've had extensive conversations in the high-rise condo market. It is, there's a lot of condos out there, y'all. There's a lot of condos out there and it's it's a pretty dicey market. Definitely be careful if you're buying condos. You wanna really get into the statistics. But here we can see that the median house, the median price for a single family house is 525. Now you see how that correlates with my, my chart right here. You can see they pull it on the fifth of the month, 525. And um, it's not, I, I, I can explain the nuance of it. This is very accurate to what they're, what they're publishing. So if you're ever wondering what Greater Nashville Realtors is going to publish, this is kind of a rolling 31 days versus they on the 5th will get the 31 days of the previous month, the, all the whole month. So it's not going to be exact, but it's definitely going to tell you what's happening with price. It's pretty cool. It's on my website, nationalrealestatedata.com. Okay, so what is happening with price? We can see 524, but here's the thing, y'all. In 2024, we had only 2,584 sales in the month of July. Now, this is the second month in a row where 2025 numbers came higher in terms of closings than 2024. Here we got 2,662. That is, you know, it's about 80 listings higher, but still, I mean, it's it's higher for the second month in a row and it's higher with a higher median price by almost 5%. That is shocking. More people are buying and they're paying more. Now, how does that jive with what, you know, some of the things I'm hearing, some of the comments I've been reading, some of the anecdotes that are out there, even some of the experiences that I've been seeing, how can we say price is going up? And the argument is mix. More people are buying on the higher end and the less people are buying on the lower end. That has become more true and more true as time has gone on. And certainly with this median price up 5% year over year, I don't see really anywhere where home values are going up that dramatically in Nashville. It's basically flat. You know, that's what Zillow said for June. I can't wait to see what they say for July. I'm very curious. I think that they'll probably say that home values are actually lower year over year, even more than they were in June, and I'm gonna show you why here in a second. It's shocking when you see it. Okay, so we know that median price here is up, but we also have this question about whether or not home values are really going up like that. Well, let's take a look at two statistics here. We've got active listings. Active listings are astronomically higher. They're 28% higher. You know, you see, if you all follow ReVenture Consulting, he talks about active listings through the roof in Nashville. Well, that is true. This is greater Nashville, so it's not just Nashville City, but it's all the counties. But here's the thing. It's actually pretty significantly lower than where it peaked in July. We're actually starting to see active listings recede, and it's possible that they will recede and never really get back to their July high. I don't, I'm not saying that's going to happen yet. I still tend to think it'll go up, but I think we might peak around 94, 9,500 this year. Of course, I just don't know. I mean, this is this is a, quite a bit of a drop, 150 drop. Now, what makes this drop interesting is because some of the narratives we're hearing is that new listings are lower. New listings are lower. I don't track listings 
by day or week. I only look at the monthly report, so I don't report on it as much. But what I can say is that contract volume is higher by about the number that we are lower. So part of me wonders if new listings are about the same, cancellations are about the same, but contracts being up 7.5% versus last year, we only had 2,300 under contract. This time last year, now we have 2,472, 7.5%, 172 more houses under contract than last year at this time. This is rivaling the 2023 number. It's pretty amazing to see it bounce that hard. And the question is, are we going to see more resilience through the rest of the year? Or is this a blip right before school? I don't know the answer to that. I truly don't know. I, I've stopped forecasting because every time I forecast, I, I can tell you what's happening better than anybody, like better than anybody. I can tell you what's happening. I got the daily tracker for the price. I've got price cuts. I've got contract volume. I can tell you what's happening better than anybody. What I can't tell you is, is what's going to happen. I, I truly don't know. People are like, oh, what do you think about price? It's like, look, I'm bullish on Nashville long-term, but we've got some major headwinds for the next several years. I don't know if prices are going to go down. I would have thought they would have already dropped. They're not really dropping. Kind of. We're going to get there. Here we've got contracts higher than they were last year, but that made me think, if our price cut, if we look at price cuts as a percentage of active listings, we see these are also down. So contracts are up, price cuts as a percentage of active listings are down from where they peaked in July, and active listings are down. Are we starting to see motivated sellers, those that cut their price, move? That was the question I had. So what I did was I put together this little chart right here, and it's just, uh, and this is going to include condos too. So if the numbers are slightly different, that's, that's why they're slightly different. Here we can see 2,870 total under contract, including condos, and 1,008 price reductions as of August 9th. If we were to take that percentage, that ratio of 1,008 over 2,870, what we would get, and I, uh, I zoomed in here so we could see it, what we would get is 35%. 35%. So my question, you can see that that long-term average here is 30%. But my question is, is this abnormal? Are we starting to see sellers just start, you know, moving their properties? And that's where I, I compared it year over year. So this is the same chart, but now we're using year over year. So what are the percentage of discounted contracts today compared to last year? So out of the contracts that we have under contract, how many have lowered their list price? Their list price is lower than the original list price. And what we can see is that really starting in May, this number jumped up. Now, why is that interesting? Well, because starting in June, contracts take about 30 days to close. We started seeing prices skyrocket for median price. Median price kind of went, I don't want to say unhinged, but it just like the gravity, you can see it here, just popped up to... I mean, it was an all-time high. It was an all-time high. So why in the world would it pop up to an all-time high? And what we're seeing here is more motivation. Well, let's go to my buyer's contract, okay? This is the house he's under contract for. And you can see the list price is $725. And it appraised, of course, it's saying it appraised $150 below the last appraisal. But the truth is, is that this house had been listed in the past at $850. This was a million-dollar appraisal at one point now listed at 725. What's interesting about this? This is above the median price. The price per foot is above the median price per foot. This would push up the median price. I think what is happening, and it started in June, is some of those more expensive houses that have been trying to sell for 2023, 2024, they just haven't been able to sell. They're starting to move this year we're starting to see those prices drop, even as it's lost almost a 30% drop from where it appraised. It sits above these numbers. It would push the sales price up. It would push price per foot up. The, one, the other thing that I love looking at, you can see you've got supply and you've got demand. But one ratio here, let me take these off for a second. One ratio that's really interesting is when you take the ratio of active listings over contracts. Okay, that's what I essentially call supply. It's the ratio that I use on all of these where it says active listings under contract and I get that ratio. And I like measuring that over time. I think it's really interesting. By the way, look at the inside of 440. It has gotten a lot harder. Look at that, 17 contracts. Last year there was eight. Even though there's more active listings, way more under contract. 
three under contract. Last year, there was zero. Even though there's more active listings, way more under contract. So there is something starting to move inside that 440. Kind of interesting. But that ratio of active listings to under contract, that to me is the most interesting ratio. So I love this chart right here. This is price bands. And actually the most expensive price band, one and a half million is this green bar. Now, one thing that's interesting about this is active listings over contract. You can see it spiked in 23. You can see it spiked in 24. And now it's moving up. But here's what's interesting about this is we are starting to see that spike again in the one and a half million range. What this means is active listings relative to what is going under contract is starting to hit that eight month mark, which I think is usually where you start really getting some soft opportunities. I guess you call it uh, more of a buyer's market in the, in the one and a half million plus phase. Now, why is that interesting? We're not seeing that happen on the 750 to million and a half. We're not seeing that happen on the zero to 750. That's kind of interesting. To me, that's kind of interesting. Now, I would love to hear your all's perspective. As you know, I'm only giving you the current market because every time I forecast, I even forecasted that July prices, I said, you know what? Price cuts are signaling that we're gonna get a big price drop and we did not get that in July. So look, I just don't like forecasting price. I can't tell you where price is gonna go. Certainly not the median. I hope that I've provided some context as to why this market is so bizarre and yet we are seeing values drop but median price go up. And with that, I hope you have a great weekend. I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Thanks a lot.